the journey began with me doing some genealogical research. Um, I, I went home, uh, interviewed some of, some of my family, uh, did some research, went to the Augusta Genealogical Society, uh, did some of that work, and uh, then photography and then travel. So most of this was inspired by uh, my genealogical research. So let, let me just share a few, a few pictures right now. Uh, this is a cemetery. This is the Wilkerson Cemetery. Um, my great-great-grandmother, Louise Barnes, uh, was born in 1845 and uh, died in 1931. So she lived a long life. Um, the problem was I didn't know where she was buried. I couldn't find, my grandmother had an idea where she might be buried uh, and some other family members were buried as well. There was a cemetery called Wilson Cemetery, but it's not on the map. It's, you can't find it anywhere. So the Wilkerson family, which is a, a white family that owns this cemetery. Um, and right next door to this cemetery, right next to it, is what we gather is the Wilson Cemetery. We still, still can't find anything on the map about Wilson Cemetery. Uh, I walked through this, well, I'm not gonna say I walked through it, I kinda high stepped because I saw some snake holes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kinda like this here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so as soon as I saw the snake holes, I, I just started walking back toward the car. But as my wife and I was trying to find this area, there was, it's an in industrial area. There's a railroad track uh, on the opposite side of that fence in the back there. And, um, and there's a trucking company. And so my wife and I driving back, in, back, back up in this, this dirt road. And this guy comes out and said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I'm trying to find uh, what's, what's, what's the name of the cemetery. He said, it's Wilkerson Cemetery. And there's a guy that comes, part of the family who lives in Atlanta. He comes like once every six months to clear off the cemetery, to, to, clean, uh, to clean it off and so forth. And I asked him, do you know anything about the, cem the, the, the cem cemetery next door? He said, I don't know anything about it, but uh, you can give this guy a call. And uh, so we tried to reach him. Uh, he did share a little bit of information with us. This is Wilson Cemetery. This, this is the cemetery. This is where I gather my great-great-grandmother, Louise Barnes, uh, is buried. And perhaps um, my great-great-grandfather, Joseph Barnes, and my great great uncle Tillman Barnes is buried there. Um, and, and probably my, my great grandfather, Josh Barnes is buried there as well. My grandmother had in her house, she had a picture of my great great grandmother and um, she was standing on the porch, uh, just looking into the camera. And this must have been, you know, must have been around 1920. Uh, my, my, aim, my desire is to get this, this place cleaned up. Um, and because there are some headstones in there and we could see it, but you, you just, you can't get through it. You get, you, and no doubt there are snakes in that area. <laughs> so I, I wasn't about to, to try to even, uh, I wasn't going to even think of it. Uh, we also went to 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, some of you are familiar with that church. It was uh, 19, I believe it was in 1963, I believe, where uh, the church, uh, a bomb was planted uh, in the basement of this church and killed four beautiful young ladies uh, in Sunday school. Uh, so my wife and I, went to worship there. Uh, so we uh, enjoyed the fellowship. This is the church. It's a beautiful church. It was, it was the, the church where there were black bankers, black lawyers, um, black business owners. It was a very well-established 
uh, church in Birmingham. And, you know, some of the, the racism, Birmingham was, was like the seatbed of racism uh, during this time, the Ku Klux Klan. And, uh, and Birmingham had a reputation. Uh, it was so bad they called it Bombingham. Um, that they would often uh, use bombs to uh, and, and place them in cars in black neighborhoods, and it was known to be uh, Birmingham. And that's where Dr. King was was arrested and wrote his letter uh, from the Birmingham jail in Birmingham, Alabama. Now I'm jumping. I'm jumping to. <laughs> I'm jumping to. Uh, Going to England. So it's interesting because here's the thing. We, we were in Birmingham, Montgomery in January, and we came back to Seattle, packed our clothes. We were half packed, and we flew immediately to London. And we, we had maybe a, a day of rest. Did we rest a day, dear? Rest a little bit. And there was a, 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 a tour guide, her name was Fiona. Uh, Fiona was a retired ballerina and a historian. And uh, Fiona, she could walk. I mean, she, she, she could walk. I can still hear her footsteps today. I mean, I, she, we must have walked, we took at least 19, 25,000 steps but she was ready to take 25,000 more. And we met with her at 10 o'clock uh, that morning. She took us to the, uh, the Buckingham Palace and we watched the changing of the guards. Uh, and uh, she began to explain to us, you know, what was, what was taking place. And uh, it, was a beautiful, it was a beautiful sight to see. It was something that I uh, wanted to see and uh, and it was great to see, you know, some brothers in this in this. Uh, I could see two brothers in there. Amen. <laughs> you got to look hard, but they're in there. <laughs> Anyone know 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 this place? Westminster. Yeah, Westminster Abbey. I, I was captivated. I could have stayed in there all day. It, it was just amazing. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things I did not realize is that when you walk through uh, Westminster Abbey, that people were buried in the floors of Westminster Abbey. But I was, I was mesmerized by Westminster Abbey, and uh, when we were there, uh, they were getting the royal chair ready for Prince Charles. And we watched this lady meticulously looking uh, at the royal chair and making sure that it was stable, to make sure that it was structurally sound. Uh, she was just, she, you could not get her attention. I was kind of waving at her. She was like, but it was, a, it was amazing to see that and then to see uh, the king in that chair. I said, "Wait, we saw that chair. We were right there by it." Anyone, anyone know know where, where this place is? The Tower Bridge. That's right. Now this, and we mimic this this these two ladies, my wife and I. <laughs> I talked my wife into doing it with me, so uh, you can see the people walking. Uh, bottom there, and, and uh, it was just a joy. It was a joy to have to have fun. I had my camera in my hand. <laughs> Has anyone been to Fountain Abbey? Uh, Fountain Abbey was uh, where a monastery was, and uh, I think it was King George. I want to say the the eighth, King George the eighth. I believe it's King George the eighth. He wanted the land. He wanted the land. He wanted to take it from, from the monastery, the monks there, and he blew up the place, he desecrated the place. But part of it is still standing, 
uh, and this is this is one this is one part of it. it didn't didn't show up too good on the screen here, but this is one part of you can see. Um, let me see if there's another picture here. Oh, this this is this is in uh, almost like the basement of Fountain Abbey. This is a beautiful area, uh, but there's there's another area where it's just decimated. But there's certain areas that have been protected. My wife took this picture. I got a I got an email from Ancestry uh, DNA, DNA, and they said your DNA suggests that you like to take naps. <laughs> now we're we're actually on uh, a, a tour bus, Ravi's tour bus, and it's a 16 seat tour bus. We meet uh, the guy who's, dri who's driving us around from York down the countryside of England and kind of giving us a grand tour. Uh, his name is Clive. And uh, we met him that morning. Uh, I think it was in Ma Manchester. We met him that morning in Manchester. And um, when we got there, we were thinking that the bus was going to be full. It was only me and Michelle. So we had the tour bus all to ourselves for three days. For three days. Uh, so we weren't, we weren't rushed. We weren't hurried. Uh, he took the time, played us some great uh, Scottish and Irish music, uh, you know, and we're, we're, we're driving down the countryside of England. He's blowing his horn to get the sheep out of the road. And, uh, and we, made, we made stops along the way, and it was just an amazing time and amazing place. We, we went to London first, uh, uh, York, um, Manchester, and then uh, to Venice and Florence, and last... The last place you stopped was Paris. And uh, these are a couple of pictures I took. Uh, one of the things I love about Venice is how the light hits the buildings. And uh, right at sunset, you can see the light moving and the, 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 the beauty, the nostalgic look of the buildings uh, was just captivating for me. So I often waited for people to walk into the shade or walk into the light, and then I would take a picture. Uh, kind of, my, my, my method of photography is wait for people to walk into the scene and then take a picture of them as they walk into the scene. And, and try to do it discreetly. <laughs> we were in Venice on Valentine's Day. Uh, it, was, it was so beautiful. It was, the carnival was there as well. So there were a lot of pictures, a lot of people dressed in, in their uh, attire, masks, and it was, it was an amazing time to be in Venice. Uh, magical. Uh, now I know what me people mean by Venice being such a magical place and a romantic place.